things and hats and all sorts of things. Uh, tonight's talk with Hubert Barrière, the artistic director of the venerable Parisian embroidery studio, Maison Lesage, will be like no other. And I wish we could uh, triple the size of this room because that's the number of people that wanted to come this evening. Cooper Hewitt's biannual Design by Hand series celebrates the essential role of the human hand in the design process. Thanks to our wonderful partners at Van Cleef and Arkfeld, designers from Pixar Animation Studios, Mari Necco, Heath Ceramics, Ralph Rucci, have come together for these amazing workshops for people of all ages where the constituencies will participate in fascinating conversations on what they learn and create through their handwork. So, for our sixth installment of Design by Hand, it's hard to believe it's flying by, um, it is truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience to have the embroiderers and the creative leadership of Maison Lesage, one of France's most esteemed ateliers at Cooper Hewitt. So, huge thanks to Van Cleef for making this possible. And when I say making this possible, it's really making it possible. We started the Lesage celebration this morning with a mini workshop and breakfast with the press who sewed black gems onto bandanas. It was super hip. Um, and I emphasized how at Cooper Hewitt, we really encourage visitors to stop and look and appreciate design objects and how they are made. The Le Sage workshops taking place at the museum this week will show just how rigorous and rewarding that process is. Thank you to, to Hubert and the terrific team of embroiderers for sharing their talents and stories and for recreating the Maison Lesage workshop at Cooper Hewitt. With over 4,000 embroidered textiles that range from a Western Indian Turin frieze hanging to 18th century silk embroidered men's waistcoats to a machine embroidered bio-implantable device, embroidery is a specialty of Cooper Hewitt's collection. Happily, Maison Lesage's visit is perfectly timed with our current textiles exhibition, Scraps, Fashion, Textiles, and Creative Reuse, a global focus on sophisticated solutions to, to textile waste with exquisite works of embroidered recycled textiles. If you haven't seen Scraps, run here tomorrow. For nearly a century, Maison Lesage has produced fine hand embroidery for France's revered houses of haute couture. Pierre Balmain, Christian Dior, and Karl Lagerfeld are just a few of the iconic designers who have commissioned Maison Lesage to design and sew avec les petites mains, the elaborate and de delicate trimmings for their collections. Today, there are over 75,000 embroidery works in the Lesage archives a veritable design library of drawings and hand-sewn fabrics embellished with sequins, beads, shells, ribbons, and precious stones. It would be a dream come true to acquire one of those important samples for Cooper Hewitt's collection, and I can't help but... <laughs> uh, this evening, Hubert will share Maison Lesage's fascinating history and inspiring design work an internationally renowned couturier who received the Grand Prix de la Mode de la Vie de Paris following the presentation of his very first collection in 1996. Hubert is also the author of A Cultural History of the Corset, a signature design of his collections. Following Hubert's presentation tonight, Matilda McQuaid, Deputy Curatorial Director, Head of Textiles, and one of the co-curators uh, of the Scraps exhibition, will join Hubert for a Q&A. So just closing with a, a special thanks to our dear friends at Van Cleef & Arpels for their ge generous and very unique, I must add, support of design by hand. I'd like to welcome my dear friend and Cooper Hewitt trustee, Alain Bernal, President and CEO of Van Cleef & Arpels of the Americas to the podium. Enjoy tonight's program. so much, Caroline. I'm going to be short because I guess uh, you all want to see the artist on stage very quickly. Uh, and I usually don't write, write anything on paper, but you know, coming after Caroline is always a challenge. 
And tonight is a little bit special because we have a special artist with us, right? I just figured out I should be a little bit prepared. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here and, and to represent Van Tiefen Appest and to be here individually. Uh, I was here last Saturday, two days ago, with my wife visiting the, the museum and uh, visiting the new exhibition by the people. And I strongly encourage all of you to go and visit it. Uh, and could once again witness how unique is the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum. Uh, navigating from the process lab to this amazing, amazing exhibition, um, enjoying incredible objects. And for those who missed uh, Tom Brown, I mean, too bad. I think he finished <laughs> yesterday. I'm sure he's going to come back one day, but it was just incredible. I mean, mirrors and shoes, and all kinds of objects. I mean, fascinating. And I have to say, I had the feeling not to be alone because the museum was packed. And I know you measure very thoroughly the, the visitors' <laughs> numbers. So uh, congratulations really for, for what you did since the, the reopening, before the reopening, but since the reopening, it's really a fantastic Bravo Caroline. Uh, it's all the more pleasure since we are welcoming the Maison Le Sage tonight. Uh, I have to say that when I first heard of Le Sage as a honorary and guest, I felt really excited, and I think the whole team of Antif and Appels and everybody felt really excited uh, to, to have this new chapter of Design by Hand with, uh, with La Maison Le Sage. It's a mythic name for French people. It's a mythic name for all the lovers of, uh, of fashion and, and art and design. Uh, it symbolizes perfection as an art, inventiveness, elegance, delicacy. It's a balance of technique and style uh, Caroline, you reminded that 75,000 samples are in the archive, which is just a fascinating number. And uh, it's a great balance between this tradition and the true modernity. So I did some homework, and there are some fascinating facts and, facts and figures. I traveled uh, across stitches and knots and tassels and sequins and threads and ribbons and strands and even plastic spaghettis. <laughs> true. I discovered some amazing collaborations, and you reminded a few, Caroline, uh, such as the one with Yves Saint Laurent, which is you know, one of a kind with the Van Gogh's and Flowers collection. Just imagine this Irish jacket with 25,000 sequins in 22 colors, 200,000 beads, and 250 meters of uh, ribbon. Right. I read these beautiful words from uh, Francois Le Sage. Embroidery means creating with discipline, suggesting while seeming to follow, having a divinatory but wise imagination. It is not quite an art, but it is more than a craft. So obviously coming from Van Cleef and Appels, you can imagine that those words completely resonate with us. This search for perfection in the balance of meaningful creation, unique techniques, and the choice of the most striking stones for us, what we call the Pierre de Caractère, is our daily adventure. So celebrating Le Sage this week is a pleasure, it's an honor, and I think it's the best illustration of what design by hand really means. Revealing the work of a designer who is also a craftsman, or a craftsman who is also an artist, and all this by hand, of course because even in a scary world with artificial intelligence and all kinds of robots, nothing, nothing will replace the intelligence of a human hand. So it is my immense pleasure, together with Caroline, to welcome Hubert Barrière, the artistic director of La Maison Le Sage, a true artist, the specialist of Corset, as you said, among other fields of inspiration, and our guide to discover more of the magic of La Maison Le Sage. So, Hubert, it's a treat and a privilege to welcome you. Up to you on stage, in French or in English. Thank you very much. so happy to be with you this evening. I would like uh, to take a minute to thank Caroline and uh, Copper Hewitt 
for that kind of invitation to talk about Lesage, passion, savoir faire, luxury, but above all, passion. Without passion, it's not possible to talk about uh, embroidery. Uh, today I'm talking you behind the scenes to discover the wonderful world of the Sage. The workers in the Sage, me, I name elves because it's a fairy tale. <coughs> really, it's a fairy tale. Not every time. Sometimes it's a little bit odd, sure. <laughs> but we are very lucky to be in the Sage and to do beautiful things as books. I apologize for my accent, and I hope you will be able to follow me. Hello. <laughs> and the technique for me is not easy. Ah. What is embroidery? Uh -huh. Aha, <coughs> great question. Embroidery <coughs> is the art of applying designs, patterns, or textures to a fabric using beads, sequins, stitching, lot of things and sometimes surprising material like plastic metal papers. A brief story of embroidery. It, uh, it's one of the oldest crafts in the world. It even dates back to Egyptian pharaonic times. Embroidery with thread has existed in France uh, uh, since uh, the Middle Ages. It was called la broderie blanche, white embroidery. It was not white, but the name is La Vaudrie Blanche. 12th century, the crusaders arrived from Jerusalem, bringing with them the first god Persian thread. It was called La Broderie d'Or. 14th century, returning for his journeys to China, Marco Polo broke skilled thread, which was used for embroidery. For me, it's one of the most magnificent embroidery in the world because uh, it's as beautiful on the inside as on the outside of the fabric. It's very, very difficult uh, to do that. It's wonderful for me. What made French embroidery so prestigious and unique is uh, that it became the cradle of global culture and technique influences and traditions. Embroidery was used to mark the ranks of hierarchy for royalty, heads of, the, of state, military, and the church. For example, the king and the queen for royalty, pope and bishop for church, and the general for the military. Today, embroidery can be found everywhere in fashion because it's one of the most common ways to enhance and decorative clothing. At the end of the 19th century, Michonnet, very typical French name, <laughs> an embroiderer, was the first to work for fashion. He supplied the first great name in couture, Charles Frédéric Rose. He's English, but he, he stays in France. <laughs> so what is perfect? <laughs> Personally, I believe that haute couture was born with Rose Bertin. Rose Bertin is a seamstress of Marie Antoinette, the queen Marie Antoinette. But that's my opinion. While uh, Charles Frédéric Wert supplied the French imperial coat, he also started his own fashion collection and use Michonnet's embroidery into its pieces. This period really started the symbolic uh, relationship between fashion and embroidery. At the end of this career, at the age of 102, Albert Michonnet sold his work to a young couple, Albert and Marie-Louise Lesage. Clearly, embroidery is a very good uh, anti-aging occupation, <laughs> and certainly uh, that is why I choose it. <laughs> Marie-Louise and Albert de Lestage, the family story, having both the, the workshop with her husband, Marie-Louise Lestage continued to work as assistant to Madeleine Vionnet before buying the workshop with his wife, Albert Lesage, work as buyer of, of, for Marshall Field in Chicago instead, of course. 
In those days, Madeleine Vionnet was one of the biggest maisons of haute couture at this period. She created most of her embroidery with Maison Le Sage, so it was a huge opportunity for Le Sage workshop to be recognized in the couture world. Here are also some, uh, some examples of uh, this collaboration. Madeleine Vionnet is still very influential today among uh, uh, fashion designers such as uh, uh, Azetina Laya, for example. To give you an idea of how modern she was, she had 1,200 employees on Avenue Montaigne, and she had created a nursery on the premises of, uh, of, of them. Sometime that was uh, unusual, of course, at this time. She is very modern. <coughs> she was. Another famous designer at the time, Elsa Schiaparelli. Her style was uh, very structured, influenced by surrealism, astrological symbols, circus, music. And as a result, uh, the embroidery that Le Sage created for her was extremely decorative. Uh, thanks for this for thanks to this collaboration, Le Sage quickly became famous of its avant-garde motif. Le Sage was uh, able to adapt uh, the different styles, stiffness of Schiaf designs, and the fluidity of, of Vionnet styles in the same period. That is very interesting. As we all know, Elsa Schiaparelli and Coco Chanel were mortal enemies. <laughs> as a result, Coco refused to work uh, with Elsa suppliers as a Le Sage. <laughs> François Le Sage. François Le Sage was one of three children of Marie-Louise and Albert. He had passion about embroidery, and he had involved in the company until his uh, very last day. He passed away five years ago. When he was young, he went to Los Angeles with the idea to selling his embroideries to the studios in Hollywood. He took over the workshop when his father died. He was only 19. It was really thought for him at the beginning. Uh, all of the designers asked him, where is your mother? I we want to work with her. After three or Four years, uh, he managed the gain, the trust, uh, and the new generation of designers like Christian Dior, Balenciaga, uh, Balmain, of course. Ah, the small video. Yeah. <laughs> Moi j'aimais bien le côté euh, de garder le côté cuir et euh, les pigments comme ça. 
J'aime bien ce côté euh, toile. C'est assez joli, une nourriture comme ça. Mm -hmm. Et celui-là, j'aime beaucoup, là. Ça, c'est chic. C'est frais, c'est joli, un peu fragile. Ça serait amusant, peut-être, de, de reprendre un peu cette idée-là, mais en jouant avec du mariné blanc. D'accord. Moi, je trouve que c'est assez joli. de Givenchy, a really true gentleman. He was also a long-term collaborator of Le Sage, was uh, the first uh, couturier to invent the muse. In this role, he chose his uh, dear friend Audrey Hepburn, his Saint Laurent. The collaboration between uh, Saint Laurent and François Le Sage dates back to when Mr. Saint Laurent was the designer for the Maison Christian Dior. This extraordinary and exclusive creative collaboration lasted over 44 years. There is a, this jacket, ah, there is a beautiful story attached to this uh, particular design. The story is, once upon a time, one day Mr. Le Saint Laurent asked Monsieur Le Sage to come to his office, pointing to the light streaming through his window and heating the chandelier hung above his desk. He asked Monsieur Le Sage, could you create for me an embroidery that uh, reflects the way that the light of the Paris sky it's my chandelier and reverberates in my mirror. <laughs> Easy, no? <laughs> and that it. it's. It's uh, uh, homage à ma maison, tribute of my house. Me, I love this jacket, honestly. It's a dream. We have the sample in the atelier, of course. It's uh, always a great pleasure to see this, uh, this uh, sample. A dream. As I mentioned, Le Sage didn't work uh, for uh, with Chanel because of Schiaparelli. Le Sage started to work with Chanel when Karl Lagerfeld became artistic director in 1983. Uh, for Karl, Le Sage is indispensable and irreplaceable. Irreplaceable partner. <laughs> <laughs> he lacks his creativity and know-how of the Maison Le Sage. Once a year, Carl dedicates a fashion show to all of the master of crafts. This collection brings traditional crafts and techniques into the modern world. This uh, collection is Collection des Métiers d'Art, the name. It's uh, in December. This is a way to protect and maintain this exceptional knowledge and skills of the various, various masters of crafts. The first collection was just over 10 years ago. This collection has uh, had a various theme, 
euh, Tokyo, New York, euh, Shanghai, Byzance, euh, Edimbourg, Dallas, euh, Salzbourg, et la ciel Rome. Rome. The second dress is very interesting, was inspired by Coromandel's screen that is a Chanel apartment. The third is a cruise Cuba the, in uh, last <laughs> May. Uh, the bodies of this dress figure sequin, embroidered cigar, cigar as an homage to Cuba. We do it uh, the boxes of cigar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last one is the famous 3D Tayo Chanel that was uh, uh, of the last Met's costume exhibit, Manuset Machina. François Le Sage was also close to Christian Lacroix, with uh, whom he created uh, some of the most beautiful pieces. Christian Lacroix was a professional godson of uh, François Le Sage. Christian Dior. Let's talk about uh, this one in particular. This one, the, 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 and the trois, third. This one is a skeleton made with aluminum chocolate wrapping paper, <laughs> inspired by the Mexican carnaval, Dio de la Muerte. Uh, so the embroiderer had to eat a lot, a <laughs> lot of chocolate in order to have enough wrapping paper of, for this creation. It's very stunning to work uh, in the stage. Huh? This one of the most surprising materials uh, we use, of course. The creation for Galliano was uh, pretty extravagant. Nicole Kidman for Dior is an example of uh, what I said earlier. Nicole Kidman wearing the Dior dress on the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival. We didn't know who the dress was intended for. So it was a pleasant surprise to see uh, her being photographed in this dress. It's uh, created by Graf Simmons. And the uh, last one, it's uh, the last collection with uh, Maria uh, Giuli, the new designer of Dior, come from uh, Valentino. Gautier creation has sometimes um, one of my favorites. This first one, the famous Panther dress. What a story. This dress created a scandal, a real scandal, because some people, especially people from uh, PTA, PTA, believe it was a real animal skin, but uh, not at all. It's uh, full of beads and sequins. No first was used to create it. This uh, and the dress in uh, right uh, center is eighty fans to do it. Uh, this uh, this dress, uh, fake fans of course, huh? and uh, all in embroidery. And the last one is streaking because it's completely made of sequins. Only the scape is made of wool. The illusion of uh, night, enfin, uh, wool, but it's not. That is a particular of Ambrotova. We, we, uh, we create illusion. With the sequence, we imagine the reflect of the, 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 the sun on the, the sea. No, it's just plastic, but good to have this power, in fact. <laughs> uh, Valentino. Uh, the, Center, it's a, in, a reinterpretation of the painting of Cranach, the Adam and Eve. Minimum 2,000 hours for this one. To do. All these thread, uh, Chinese techniques of thread, and no beads at all. And some feathers also inside, in the tree. That is so beautiful. And the sash also is exciting to work with a new designer, of course. It's really important for the sash to keep working with up and coming designers. It's a way of perpetuating its activity. <coughs> Fa 
wasn't enough uh, while uh, for out his career, François Le Sage became known as the embroiderer. He didn't know how to see a button. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> he, <laughs> he likes to work with designers and he liked to suggest but never impose. After it's me to recognize me, okay, we pass. <laughs> Le Sage today is a treasure comprised of 75,000 samples created by Le Sage and Michonnet period. For us, uh, archive is uh, all of the creation of the house, also the last, collect the last creation we do it five minutes before. That is a sample immediately we arranged in the archives. The Le Sage Archive represents the biggest collection of couture embroidery in the world and continues to inspire couturier designers uh, and creative type allies, of course. Le Sage had around a few hundred new embroidery every year. Also, Le Sage is also a treasure trove of materials, but um, over the years, um, for all over the world, all together comprise 70 tons of materials. And it's never, never enough. Of course, we would like to have what we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's like uh, for you, madame, in your uh, uh, placard uh, room, you don't have exactly the good color to, to, to put with your uh, pants on your dress. And, same thing for us, <laughs> a real nightmare. <laughs> in 1990, motivated by a desire to div diversify the activity of his house, François Le Sage established a textile workshop. Today, eight people work for Le Sage Tweed department. Le Sage uses only Manuel Luce and he has developed partnerships with two manufacturers, one in the south of France and one in the north of Italy. Uh, and to illustrate that, uh, ah, oui. movie. <laughs>
thank you for the team because of course the team is absolutely fantastic, passionate, professional. It's a dream to work with them, of course. Also, in 1992, this, despite the economic crisis, Le Sage, Monsieur Le Sage, did not want to lay off his own brothers. So instead to open the Ecole Le Sage, thereby allowing his employees to become teachers, keep their jobs, and transmit their craft. School is open to everybody, if you want, amateur and professional. Oula. <laughs> let, uh, now, let me know, let me know, tell you more. It's difficult to read sometimes. Let me know to tell you more about my career and my vision of embroidery. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little about my life before the search. I have uh, been luckier during my life because I never really had to choose my profession. I have been drawing stilettos and dresses in my notebooks since uh, the age of eight. I have no idea how it's, this came about, particularly because my family is light years from the fashion and luxury world. I was uh, born uh, very far from Paris, in the west part of uh, France, Bretagne. I, be I began studying law to please my parents. <laughs> After six years of torture and forced labor, <laughs> I finally admitted that it wasn't for me. At that time, I was working for the Ministry of Justice, please, Place Vendôme, not so far, Rue Saint-Roch, just by the school, École de la Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisienne. <laughs> the famous fashion school. I wanted to study there, but I didn't have enough money to pay the tuition. So, I went to a bank and convinced them to grant me a student loan. I think today it's not easy to do that, but for me, it was possible at this period. Thank you so much. <laughs> there is nothing heroic about what happened to me. It was simply suffocating in the legal world, and I was seeking bitter breathing space. After two years of study, in, uh, at the Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisienne, uh, three options led before me. Jo join the Saint Laurent Studio, or the Scherer Studio, or the Dior Studio. This, uh, these very low pay training positions wouldn't have uh, allowed me to pay back my loan. Then a miracle appeared, happened. Mr. Vermont, famous embroiderer at the time, called the school because he was looking for a student motivated by embroidery and drawings. My director of the time replied, hold on, I've, j I've got just the person you need. And it was me. <laughs> it was a wonderful opportunity for me because I ended up working and cooperating directly with the artistic director something that would have been impossible at Saint Laurent or Dior, Nana, where I would probably have been the assistant of the assistant, <laughs> of the assistant, <laughs> Mr. Coffee. <laughs> when the doors are closed, the windows always remain open. A few years later, I, I wanted to create my own company to be self-employed. A secret dream. I had been hovering for a very long time. Fortunately, I had a very large social and professional network. My passion for creation was strong, but I needed to build something profitable from the very start as my financial means were limited. My idea was to fully celebrate femininity through my creations. I decided to propose corsets 
instead of on rotaries. Why? Because the years 2000 were nearing and I'd anticipate two fashion trends following, two major principles, a return of femininity, a comeback of the agilist womanhood after a decade of desexualization in fashion, a nostalgic energy to return to the past in order to live the uncertain future in a more certain way. I surfed <coughs> and rode on the new fashion wave led by John Galliano, Alexander McQueen, and Stella McCartney. It was for me a great chance to work this, with these three designers in the same time, a dream, especially with Alexander McQueen, genius. I surfed and uh, in my life I was, I had, sorry, always been surrounded by the right people who have helped me tremendously. I don't pretend to be anything else other than a stylist, stylist or an art director. In fact, I'm just an intuitive, creative soul, and to tell the truth, I have no practical skills. <laughs> so, what deeply motivated and drive me? Dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. Dissatisfaction is my fuel. It forces me to reach a higher goal in very aspects of my work. At the same time, as I'm working on my corsets, I create a small embroidery workroom which enables me to embellish my corset but also to work with Jean-Paul Gaultier. Thanks to this, in 1998, the famous house of Urel, the embroiderer, appoint me as their artistic director. <coughs> of course, I couldn't do everything at once, so I closed my own embroidery workroom. Workroom. <laughs> it was at this time that I began working for Chanel, Valentino, Givenchy, Dolce Gabbana, all the major luxury brands. About six years ago, in 2012, no, 11, 11. Following this fantastic experience, the house of Chanel and Mr. Lesage spoke to me about the future of Lesage and the importance of transmitting its invaluable know-how. Shortly after, I joined Lesage and began my exciting adventure to help keep the flame alive. I, I never worked with Mr. Lesage or for Mr. Lesage. But of course, it was a master for a lot of us in this profession, and for me especially. But also, we are friends. I have the pretension to, to say that. It's, it was a great, great friend for me. And I realized today, when I speak to you about uh, Le Sage, this fantastic uh, gift he offered me to be, uh, today, artistic director of because uh, you are outside of Lesage. It's a dream for you, but for us inside, it's also a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a fantastic uh, gift, mm -hmm. to do beautiful things every day, or to attempt to do beautiful things. The, the period today is difficult, and we are very, it's a very big chance to do that. Everything. And uh, what does it mean to be the Lesage Artistic Director? I have to animate the creation teams, of course, and inspire creation, be in touch with major luxury design studios and fashion designers, act, uh, act as a spokesman for the house, like today and ensure the top quality for everything that is produced by the stash. And that is very, very important, the quality uh, in the house of the stash. Let me develop two, just uh, the first two points. Animate and inspire creation means bringing one's uh, own sensitivity to one's perception of modernity. For me, modernity consists to imagine what the future will look like. It's mindset, but uh, it's uh, 
knowing how to combine our savoir-faire with new technology. The key, the key to our work is that it's made by hand, so new technology is there to complement this handwork. I must uh, emphasize that the human aspect of our craft is essential. Of course, Le Sage's extraordinary heritage and techniques, materials and archives enrich our work. Our mission, and my mission, is to create the right product using our world looking vision while drawing from all the know-how we've accumulated over the years. One of the reasons of the perennity of embroidery lies in the fact that it has always been contemporary and trendy. This is why our work must involve new technology, because it is now a, part, a major part of everyday lives. We must face new changes, such as technological, aesthetic, demographic, ecological, economic changes. Civilization has been completely disrupted. In order to keep up with today's pace, we must always create the same extraordinary dream, the modern dream. Second point, make designers dream. Desire and inspire creation, inspire come true. Uh, make designers dream, desires and aspiration come true. My role is to be receptive and sensitive to whatever the designer has in mind, sometimes very difficult. Analyzing, understanding, and filtering their thoughts and feelings to be in symbiosis with the designer vision of his creativity, of his brand, and the code of this company. Sometimes it's absolutely not the same thing. This sounds easy, but it isn't. I have to be a mind writer sometime. Let me give you a concrete example. For his first co Dior collection five years ago, when he started working at Dior, Ralph Simmons chose new vintage as a theme. He wanted, he wanted to give his own vision of the Dior codes for for him, new vintage drew inspiration from Dior's past iconic looks, which gave, gave birth to Dior's present day looks and style. In the other hand, the same season, Karl Lagerfeld created his own new vintage theme for the Chanel collection. Karl Lagerfeld has mastered and is so in tune with all the Chanel codes, having worked, worked there for so many decades. In his mind, today's creation are tomorrow's new vintage. In Ralph Simon's case, he kept elements of the past to create today, whereas Karl Lagerfeld always sows the seed of the future, starting with today's collection. That it's very important. When you have a discussion with the designer, three things are important. What is it having in mind? Code of the uh, um, uh, so a brand and actuality also. And uh, the term, the name is not the same things. Blue in Chanel is not the same blue in Dior. Grey, the grey, the famous grey in Dior is not the same of in Yves Saint Laurent. It's important to, to understand that, to have this uh, bagage, uh, culture, to understand that. And after it's easy. But it's so interesting. It, Sometimes it's a little bit psychoanalytic, psychiatric or psychoanalytic. You understand what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to conclude. Artistic and craft profession represent excellence, savoir-faire, creativity, heritage, and innovation. They are part of a highly selective club, the luxury goods industry. Above all, we are professions of love and perfectionism, a demanding love. Every day, 
we honor our imperious muse with our own hands. Like all tired lovers, we often rebel against the tyrannies of our mistress. But it's a wonderful love story. <laughs> On behalf of the artisans who, like me, are in love with their work, I would like to thank you warmly for your attention today and remind you, the future generation of designers, that it's an art that you must be passionate about. Now, let you discover some creation for Chanel. Alors. <laughs> is a Dallas American. We play Indian and Cowboy. That is an interpretation of the American flag.
Thank you, Ben. <laughs> So, Hubert and I have an agreement. <laughs> I have a list of questions, and so he feels comfortable speaking in English. He's going to read off some of his answers to my questions, correct? correct. But we hope you have such a wonderful, effervescent personality, and you can, you can just go on. You don't have to answer directly. You can do what you would like. But um, it was an extraordinary um, presentation. And um, I think we have a, a new, profound respect for the hand. I mean, I can't imagine any other company representing what this series is all about than Maison Massage. So thank you very, very much for being here. So the first question, um, and I had the profound um, sort of opportunity to go to Paris last spring and visit Massage. Um, it was kind of a number of different um, stops I was making, but ever since this kind of withered New York Times magazine article about, I think it was when um, uh, Francois Lesage died, and reading the obituary, I've had this desire to go and visit Lesage in the studio. So I visited last March, and that's where I met Hubert. And one of the things that struck me, and which I was so excited about, was that there were so many young people. Um, I think the average age was probably 30, 32 years old. So is this a normal occurrence in this type of work in terms of embroidery? It's the last thing I would have thought um, seeing a lot of young people. And is it competitive to work at Lesage? I mean, do you have people young people beating down the doors to come work with you. And when you do hire someone, what is it that you're looking for in that young person? So I'm sorry, there's lots of different questions, but you, you can be, yeah, you have to. <laughs> yes, because I prepared before, and then English is not good. He does his homework <laughs> really well. Uh, it's wonderful, that, no? Yeah. Oh. And uh, there are so many young people interested in embroidery because uh, you might think that with the importance of new technology today, this type of craftsmanship might not appeal to a younger generation. In fact, today, they have the liberty to choose their professions. And those who want to learn our skills are really passionate about it. As opposed, maybe, that what uh, happened in the past, young people who didn't know what to do were forced to become artisans. Today, many people live in a virtual world, but our own brothers find a real meaning to their lives through their work, I think. So, you kept on mentioning passion. In fact, I think that was one of the this is not on the question, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, no, but passion. You mentioned passion in the very beginning, and also at the very end. How, when you hire someone, when you hire a young woman or a man to a border, how, what do you see in them? How do you find passion in their work? Uh, first of all, I'm not alone to to recruit. Uh, okay, it's not only you. Yeah, yeah. Caroline Le Bon, the CEO of uh, the company, and Muriel Lemoine, the director of the company, and we together talk about uh, quality of people would like to work with us. It depends on what sort of work. Mm -hmm. Drawing, to do embroidery, or to do uh, textile uh, creation. It's absolutely different. Mm -hmm. 
But sure, one thing is absolutely necessary to be passionate. Uh, that, that is the, the base of, uh, of uh, work. In fact, it's not work. The, 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 the answer is here. If you are in the search, like you would like to go to uh, work in the Grand Magasin, uh, Galerie Lafayette to Barney's, it's very fantastic, but I think it's not the same level of passion. Mm -hmm. Basically, we are passion. Okay. After, we are, the people have a cursus uh, where um, the, the school they come from. Here, I think we are three young lady with us uh, the uh, Atelier Le Sage. There are two different, absolutely different cursors. One is the textile designer, one doing an uh, 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 Saint Martin School. Mm -hmm. The other one uh, worked in uh, the Atelier de Couture. Three different ways, but the same passion and the result is absolutely amazing because it's complementary. Mm -hmm. And that is a good way for me. Nobody do it all things. Mm -hmm. What is important to mix influence of uh, different workers mm -hmm. and influence uh, and do it a new thing. It's sort of in French name it's oxymore. Oxymore is a creation of a new reality <coughs> with something absolutely opposite. Mm -hmm. And the harmony of this opposite things create a new vision. That, for me, is a uh, 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 good way, mm -hmm. uh, broadly, especially today. Not uh, on the past, but today, that is. And do you, when, you, when you're with your colleagues and hiring people, do you imagine almost like a classroom where different the different people can affect a conversation or can affect the work. So here, sometimes um, we can design a situation where we have different types of people collaborating together. Uh-oh. <laughs> different people collaborating together, and they bring out different um, uh, just different personalities, characteristics yes. than the other one. Yes. Do you also think about how they would work with other people in the workshop? That's just true. Mm -hmm. no. Exactly what I do every day. Yeah. I know when I give a uh, work for three different people to each different interpretation, and if I think what is interesting is to mix them together. Yes. Yeah. together. Mm -hmm. I love to be surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and to surprise designer also. Especially Mr. Lapierfeld, do you imagine? <laughs> so my um, second question, Good. and you can... Yes. Where do you find your inspiration, or where do your embroiderers find their inspiration? Uh, inspiration. I'm inspired by everything, honestly. Um, I love reading, music. Uh, I love life. Life is a fantastic uh, uh, inspiration. At the end of the day, it uh, isn't one thing in particular that inspires me, but my curiosity is in, in general feeds my creativity. All is interesting. After I, I, I take a um, tree, the tree, you understand tree? Okay. I put no, chuck, but yeah, 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 I did. Yes, I collect and I. Uh, <laughs> but yes, because uh, and all is interesting in life. Talk with people, discover a new place, and in. All moments of my life, I catch something interesting. It's not a, a sport; mm -hmm. it's a just a uh, natural. Mm -hmm. So I think when I was there in March, in that little secret room, mm 
with your Tiffany, where you're working on the next collection? Yes. Were you working on Cuba? Cuba, yes. That was Cuba. So you, I know there was, and you told me that much, I think. And then there were lots of magazine pages, yes. and do the embroiderers go out and look for inspiration, or do you, um, is there a lot of collaboration between you and the embroiderers? Uh, it's, it's not necessary, the best uh, um, travel is in mine. And uh, what's, when Carl would like to do this uh, fashion show in Cuba, uh, it was a uh, uh, phantasm of Cuba. Cuba, uh, what is that, Cuba? And we collect uh, different in, uh, 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 image, image uh, but typical uh, cigars, of course. The, the front of the building of La Havana uh, totally destroyed, but in the, that time, so charming because colors are beautiful. Uh, uh, the, 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 the pink, uh, uh, antique pink with uh, turquoise uh, and uh, beige green. That's beautiful. It's an art when you see just the building. Uh, that, that, that is, I call it, building, cigars, music, inspired. It's, it's, it's more um, virtual, that, but it's important also. And the shell on the the beach. the beach, yes. Uh, hats. All, everything. Yes. And after that, Carl decides he prefer to duck, 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 uh, this one. And we work behind the scene. Mm -hmm. What uh, Carl would like, exactly. So first you show him samples. Carl, I yes. this idea before. Said, he said, Cuba. Duck, 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 Cuba, and we took uh, with him or with Virginie Viard the hand, uh, right hand and left hand of this bird, like I said, what uh, Cuba inspired by Forrest. And he said, uh, Yes, uh, I would like that. that, that. He is very clear, so like I said. After we develop his idea. Yes, he's very interesting. Is he easy to work with? Oh, yes. Yes, because... Uh, <laughs> so because he has yeah. fantastic energy. It's a, it's a, it's a gift to, 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 to work for him. He's, uh, yeah, always new idea. I would like to have uh, an idea doesn't do it before. It's so exciting. Say that again? An idea that didn't, hmm? an idea that he's never had before. <laughs> well, we're going to skip yeah. that. Now, your question, I ask the question of okay. you. Huh? What are some of the most unusual design or commission you have ever seen? That is your question, okay? My answer is... <laughs> for the next Touché. show, I do it alone. My <laughs> answer, yes? But uh, in French, you, it is possible, no? I think that everything we do is unusual and unique. But to answer your question, but mine... <laughs> <laughs> One of the most unusual commissions we produced for Carl was the 3D Tiger Chanel. For the fall winter 2015 Haute Couture Collection, Carl's idea was to create something that was inimaginable at the time of Coco Chanel. And that was so exciting. Now it's a fantastic challenge to do what something was inimaginable. I it? would like to do that every day. Every day? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. And you do. Well, to me, what, I mean, looking at your presentation,
communication, you do. I mean, your team does the unimaginable every day. I mean, it was breathtaking when I came in there to watch all of them at work and the detail and the just layer upon layer of you know, adornment was just unbelievable. So I think you're already there doing it almost every day. Maybe not weekends, but. <laughs> so the third question on the list, which you've already answered earlier today, is um, do you embroider? And so he <laughs> was actually embroidering this morning with help. Uh, this morning is a, a, a big challenge for me. I but you, but I couldn't even tear you away to come see the museum. Mm. You wanted to stay and embroider, embroider. I couldn't. Finally, I had to give. I had a meeting. And I had yeah. to get yeah. Because but, uh, when I begin something, I'd like to finish. Yeah. Yes. But wait, so, you didn't finish. I think. No. Uh, yeah. True. <laughs> Sorry. No, you did. No. A, it was fantastic. But is that? Do you do that on a regular basis? Is that something? you do to wind down after a long day? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, luckily for embroiderers uh, at the stage, uh, I don't know how to embroider. And, uh, but I, um, I've learned to basic technique, like tomorrow, uh, like uh, this morning, sorry. But my specialty is, in fact, taking too much time to do 10 centimeters of embroideries and then undoing it by mistake in just one set. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> that I do it. No, 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 it's not, uh, I, don't, I don't remember. So I imagine, just imagine. That. I just do it uh, drawing, imagining. But when you were in school, you said yes. that you drew and you embroidered and that's how you got your first job, right? Right. But you didn't, you didn't continue. No, 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 no. You're a better so, editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, in fact, I drew before speaking when I was a child. Really. Mm -hmm. My expression was to draw. Right. And suddenly today, I, I, I don't read a lot. Now the, the, the life is different, or it's so quick. Uh, right. uh, on the rush and the drawing, uh, I don't have enough time to draw. Personally, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay. All right. So I guess we're going to have some questions from the audience. Bon. Okay. <laughs> So speak very clearly and Bonsoir. I was curious if there were any new materials you have not worked with yet, but that you would like to work with. New materials. So are there any new materials? Uh, if it's very new, I don't know this one uh, new fabric, I would like to discover. <laughs> because we use the laser uh, 3D print, that is a big revolution uh, in your in the life. And we use that, mixed with uh, old-fashioned uh, techniques. And um, I mean, I'm interesting by all is new, but if I, uh, of course, I don't know all new things, but if you have a suggestion, please give, give it to me. Uh, all is interesting. Next. Um, I wonder, I was very impressed with the Dallas collection. And I wonder which comes first. Does Mr. Lagerfeld design the dress and say, I want the embroidery here? Or does he, the, um, the, embroidery, the embroiderer, say, here are some ideas for putting it over here? Which comes first? 
that, that is the business of Mr. Lagerfeld. Me, I don't know. I, I create just embroideries, but after he do uh, what he want with the embroideries. In the beginning, he have the idea what he want. He's a visionary. A visionary is very good. Yeah. He, he deliver what he want. I ask, okay. I do it in the atelier. After, I don't know what is uh, the process in the studio or in the uh, office of Mr. Lagerfeld. Of course, he's going before uh, the, the silhouette and he decided after when he, uh, where he would like to put uh, this embroidery or this other one. But honestly, I don't know because uh, it's a different, um, uh, different process. Yes. And this process is so secret. Of course, it produces in mind, in mind, Mr. Lagerfeld. Next time uh, we, we we talk with Mr. Lagerfeld for this question because I don't know. I, I know I know a lot of things, but not that. <laughs> Thank you, Madame. Any other questions? Can you talk about a little bit about color? Color. How? How the colors come to be? Is the color influenced by the designer to, to you, and then you suggest colors back to him in the beading and in the embroidery? Um, I think in um, profession we are not we, we are not after the train. We imagine fashion and and a, a lot of after um, uh, uh, brown not. Higher brand, uh, as, uh, sont inspirés par ce qu'on fait, comme on dit ça, je sais pas. Inspired by all these work, yes. yes. And for your question, colors, no. Um, the, the designer would like a, a red, blue, blue, okay. We, we do it that, and also I propose opposite things, because it's interesting to uh, motivate, to to give other proposition, imagine, and after he decide. But about the, the, the question of colors, because me, I'm very sensitive of that. Uh, colors is not interesting for me. Say the mix of different colors is interesting. The the, the um, construction of uh, different colors, the impression of that, that is so fantastic. And um, yes, the blue, what? The, the blue with an uh, uh, brown, for example, marine and brown. For a very, for a lot of people, it's ugly. It depends on the tone of each colors, and uh, this association is uh, vibration. You know, that that is very interesting. Yeah. Hi, um, so I'm a student from Parson School of Design and I specifically came to the top because I'm very interested in embroidery. It's actually my focus in everything that I do. And I just wanted to ask, like coming back to your first question about what does it take for someone like me or someone um, with the same interests as me to actually come and try to work for you or just what can we do to you? give us like an extra like boost just to give us get us noticed by houses like massage or just your general advice for us to just um be a step ahead or what are you try really looking for to approach the massage yeah. to have an, uh, some realization First, your realization, your universe, that is important. And to show that when uh, you have an uh, appointment with me or one other people that work in the such, that is uh, like a carte de visite. To, because creation is what you are in mind, but here in, in your stomach, you know. And that is interesting. Me, I'm interested by that because he, I, I understand immediately if we have, uh, if we will be happy to be with us because it's, 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 it's uh, 
particular lesson of an embroidery. And also, if you give a special vision of creation, because today it's that you are young, that is a good point, because your vision is totally different than my vision. I am not too older, I suppose, but I don't have the same uh, perception of actuality. And to be with young people is so fresh and important today to be on the train. And that, yes, uh, if you would like, if you desire to work one time in an embroidery house like a Sage, it's to do before something exactly what you want, you, your, your, your universe, and show it that. Just do it. It's an uh, American... Uh, <laughs> that's it, that's it, just do it. Any more questions? <laughs> Bonsoir. Uh, my question is actually about the textiles. Why, why does Lesage continue to use hand looms instead of mechanization of it, instead of the mechanization of the looms? Um, we use loom just for the creation because we would like to continue this uh, uh, tradition. After we have two manufacturers, it's uh, automatic, it's an it's a, it's a industry after, of course. That uh, you see in the, in the video is uh, just in the uh, res research and development. Three, three or four designers uh, use uh, this, uh, this loom after not. And that is a good example for me to combine tradition and modernity. Thank you. It was a wonderful talk. Thank you very much. I would like to know if your archives are computerized. You said that there were thousands of designs and thousands of beads, and there was that shot of the room with the patterns in it and beads and things. I was just wondering how you can sort of access that, especially with lots of young people. Like, is there sort of an institutional archive? It's a private collection, honestly, and we have in a computer, of course, but we don't use a computer because, um, unfortunately, people are not... Uh, um, Sometimes people are not honest, you know. <laughs> and this treasure is not possible to 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 to, 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 to share, yes. Uh, but designers, real designers, come in, in the house to consult to see the archives when we have something in mind for a new collection. And of course we uh, they they, they, they bring with them some archive in the studio, but just for the professionals. I understand absolutely your interest for that, but uh, it's necessary to protect this treasure. Yes. Okay, I think we've run out of time, unfortunately. I think we would all love to hear more of Uber and see more beautiful things, but thank you very, very much. Thank you.